while most people wouldn't choose to get changed outside on a cold January day. We try to be very careful. We change all of our clothes. These biologists are willing to do whatever it takes. We use decontaminating wipes on our outer surfaces. All of our hair, skin surfaces that we're exposed get wiped down. And everything that was in the cave typically will bag up and then decontaminate off-site. To protect an often misunderstood animal, Bats are small and they're very mobile. They fly at night. They're very hard to study. From a deadly threat. It's really hammering our cave hibernating bats. Uh, population declines are well over 90% in the Northeast where this disease started. It's called white nose syndrome, a fungus that thrives in cold weather, growing on bats while they hibernate. Sensing the fungus, the bats wake up to clean it off, using up their fat reserves and eventually starving to death. So far, the disease has killed millions. In an effort to prevent the spread of white nose, caves in Tennessee were closed to the public, and biologists started keeping an even more watchful eye on them, trying new tactics, like banding hibernating bats to gather critical information. In the wintertime when they're hibernating, we can count them, look at them, and spend a relatively short amount of time in a cave and get a tremendous amount of population information about our bats. But it wasn't long before the disease invaded Tennessee. Of the 77 counties in the state of Tennessee that have caves, we've documented white nose in almost 50% of those caves. Its arrival is having a devastating impact, killing up to 90% of the bats in some caves. There used to be well over 100 bats just in this portion of the cave that we've uh, made it through so far, and, and we've seen seven bats. A quick check with an ultraviolet light reveals whether the fungus is present. If we shine the light on it, the fungus actually glows different colors. It has little orange spots on the ears, the muzzle, sides of the mouth. Those are the typical places where the fungus grows. So this bat actually has the fungus on it. While many bats can get the disease, the smaller, more common species seem to be more susceptible. Northern long ears, little brown bats, and tricolored bats. Uh, all three of those species were once in this cave in high numbers, and two of those three species we didn't even see today. White nose syndrome is having a big impact on bats in Tennessee, but biologists aren't without hope. Researchers are in the process of developing biological controls to help fight the disease and could soon be testing them here at this artificial cave built by the Nature Conservancy. There will be airflow constantly moving through this thing, although very slowly. Um, and we have these different structures on the ceiling just to create very small changes in temperature and humidity. Built in 2012, it was the first artificial cave designed as a bat hibernation site. So far, only a few bats have used the cave, primarily because it took some time to properly control the temperature inside. Now biologists have to decide whether to leave the cave open for bats to use, or close it, and use it as a testing ground for weapons to fight the disease. We need an intermediate step, sort of between the laboratory and a natural cave, where we can test the, the real effects of the environment and the real effects to bats that are hibernating in a natural manner. And that's where things like the artificial cave may be very useful. I'm very optimistic that within about two years we'll have some tools to combat this disease. There are researchers working really hard on biologic controls, things that would be safe for a cave environment, but hopefully limit the growth of the fungus on these bats. The biggest concern with testing biological controls is the effect they could have on fragile cave ecosystems, home to rare species like the Coleman cave beetle. We talk about bats in terms of their benefits as far as managing pest species for agriculture, but there's also the larger issue of cave bats especially as being very important for nutrient cycling in caves. Were it not for bats bringing in nutrients into this cave, that species might not exist. Ironically, gray bats, one of Tennessee's endangered species, appear to be less vulnerable to white nose syndrome, partly because they are naturally more active during hibernation and because they are larger and have more fat reserves. There are also positive signs in some northern states where bats are returning to caves where populations had been destroyed and others are going into hibernation 
with more fat reserves than usual. If that trend carries through, it's very possible that we may have bats in the foreseeable future and bats may return to caves such as this. Uh, it's just one of those things where we're going to have to sit back and, and watch and monitor and hope for the best. I'm Ken Tucker on the Wild Side.